Hey, it's you. I'm Billy Boxing here with, uh, with the Puerto Rican sensation, Xander Zayez. Now, Xander, were you supposed to come back to the ring uh, June 11th? Man, um, we, we have a couple dates. Um, we, haven't, you know, we haven't decided yet. Um, we are going to start camp next week. We're going to Australia to start camp with George Cambosos and, and the team. Um, but, you know, whenever, whenever Toppin gives me a call and, and it works for us, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make that announcement and we'll let everybody know. Hey, Xander, um, so you're going to be helping George and, and sparring? I wouldn't be helping George. I'm, you know, he, he needs, he, he's going to get his own sparring partner since he's going to be fighting, you know, a very, um, a very, you know, he's a fighter that is, doesn't compare to my style, so we don't have the Devin same Haney. style. Devin Haney doesn't have yeah. my same style, so he's going to bring um, people in. But I am going to be out there because my coach is going to be there, so we have to, you know, have to get ready. I have to get going so we can fight we the goal is to fight four times this year and, and summer will be that you know that goal to to be halfway for the year and what do you and what do you want to accomplish this year do you want to crack the top 10 in the rankings or um the top 15 at least top 15 if we can crack the top 10 i'll be more than happy to but top 15 is, is the goal um we want to you know finish the year fighting 10 rounds better our position keep moving up in, in the rank and keep looking better and better every time and Xander, what do you have to say about the critics that may question your power after the last fight? I've heard a lot of people that question, oh man, he didn't get the guy out of there. But that guy had never been stopped, never been dropped before, never never really, uh, he, in an amateur career, he's from Louisiana, never been hurt, never, never man, been on the canvas. Look, so what um, do you say to that? He was he was a tough guy. He was there to fight. He wasn't there to lay down. Yeah. I, you know, after after in the in the in the backstage, you know, I talked to him. He told me, yo, I, I thought about going down, but that's not just who I am. And, and I thank him for that. You know, I needed the rounds. I needed the experience. It's a guy that you like you said, never been stopped. You know, he's not a quitter. He wasn't there to just lay down and get a paycheck. He came to fight, and I give him props for that. You know, it, it was something that I needed. And now I get out of my head that I can go eight rounds and I can look good for eight rounds. And Xander, tell me about the pressure of being a, um, a Puerto Rican uh, fighter with with kind of, we don't have a superstar. Any, we, I mean, we're, we're looking for a superstar, you, Berlanga, a couple other guys, maybe Super El Matias, um, LeBron. But but tell me, what, what type of pressure is that carrying, you know, the island on your back? Man, um, I wouldn't say it's pressure. I would say it's just a responsibility. Um, I know what I have to do. I know what I want to accomplish. My team knows what I have to do. They keep me in that in that lane of being focused, of, of doing what I do at the at the highest level. You know, to to love. You know, I love I love what I do. So I wouldn't say it's pressure. I do want to bring glory to Puerto Rico. I do want to bring glory to my island. But I just have to stay focused. You know, time will tell, and I know that time is in my favor. And can you tell everybody about how many national titles you won as an amateur? Because some people don't know that, Xander. Yeah, man, I won 11 national titles, six in Puerto Rico, um, five here. And man, it's just, it's, it was an amazing, um, amazing career as an amateur. Um, turned pro at 16, and I'm just, I'm just happy to be where I am today. And how does that pedigree, how does that amateur experience help you in the pros? Oh man, it helped me a lot because, you know, I, I saw a lot of different styles, you know, going into tournaments, not knowing who I was going to fight, not knowing the style that they brought and being able to, to you know, focus on, on that person in three rounds and being able to, you know, figure them out. It, it, it's something that, that a lot of people don't understand, but it's needed. It's needed to, for the pros when you can figure out somebody in two, three rounds um, because then you got seven more rounds to do what you do best, you know? Um, nope. So, so I feel like the, the amateur experience is, is, is needed. How the, how the heck do you stay so composed at 19 years old and, and being a co-main and now, and, and you know, just being in the ring and seeing different styles and how do you, like, you, you have the composure of a 30 year old, Xander, you're, only, you're not even 20 yet. Man, um, it's, just, it's just dedication, you know. Um, when I get in the ring, I stay focused. I know what I have to do. I know that my life is in danger. And I know that I have to I have to stay as smart as possible and, and just listen to the corner. You know, I have fun doing what I do. I love what I do. So it's just part of the job. You know, I, I zoom out and I just listen to my corner. And out of Devin Haney and Cambosis, what chance do you give? A lot of people have Cambosis, the underdog, even though he's fighting at home. Yeah. And you, I, I remember an interview where you said Man. where you said Cambosis can upset to your female. This say it, right? Yeah, I saw that interview. So what do you um, think about this? What's the prediction for that fight? Man, a lot of people is calling him the the underdog. I don't know how you can call an underdog. I champion an underdog, but I mean he proved himself one time. I know he will prove it again. Um, he's gonna fight. He's gonna be fighting at home, so he's gonna be even more motivated. Um, man, I've never seen somebody work as hard as, as George. 
and, and I'm glad that I'm going to camp with him because I know he's gonna push me, and I'm gonna push him, and we're gonna we're gonna get it going. Um, my my expectations for this fight are high. I mean, I know he's gonna put on a show. I know he's gonna win, and he's gonna prove the world wrong once again. And your boy, uh, uh, your stable mate, Tago, Tago. What do you think he's gonna? How, how do you feel like he's gonna? Uh, um, what is his chance with Ryan tomorrow? Man, Emmanuel, I mean, Saturday, Saturday. Emmanuel Tago, he has he has all the all the tools in the arsenal to to beat um Ryan Garcia. I mean, I think he's, he can frustrate him with his distance. How how he can fight in the inside, how he can box, how he can you know work the defense. But again, he just has to stay focused. He has 12 rounds of, of work, and and as long as he stay focused and he listens to the corner, I think we have a good good chance. Okay, and Xander, what's the what's the biggest uh, what, what's the biggest advice that you can give to, to Edgar Belanga for all the criticism that he took uh, in the main event? What do you Man. have you talked to Edgar Belanga? Man, it's, it's it's all hard work. It's all dedication. He's gotten he's gotten better. We we see the improvement little by little. You know, he just has to stay focused. He has to to keep doing what he do. Um, do not lose uh, the love for the sport. I know he won't. He has a great team around him and. And like I said, man, he just he just has to, you know, stay composed, stay focused, and keep doing what he do. And what's the what's the ultimate goal? Do you want to be on the pound for pound list one day? Do you see yourself as a as a future superstar of this sport? Because I can see that. I do want to be in the pound for pound list. I want to be the number one pound for pound king. Um, I want to be a superstar. I want to be a multiple times world champion, a multiple times um, undisputed world champion. Um, but again, time will tell. I just have to stay focused, keep doing what I love, and just keep winning fights.